If you missed last week's Blade Talk Tuesday, uh, I went through and I made a kind of a long video showing every single outdoor tool in my collection. It was pretty fun to go through some of my old ones, some of my new ones, and just kind of show them off and talk a little bit about them. Again, if you haven't seen that, I recommend going back and watching that after this video. But a quick update, I went through and I made a photo gallery of my kind of high-end custom, semi-custom knives on Facebook and I'll link it in the description box of this video. So if you're interested in seeing those blades in more detail, uh, it's there for you. Since I think in the video I was rushing and I didn't really get good close-ups of any of the any of the custom knives. Should we talk about survival knives? I feel like we should. It's, it's going to be a, a debatable topic and something that will hopefully spark some interesting conversation in the comments section below. But this is something that I've been very curious about ever since I first started this YouTube channel back in 2015. I've been in search of the perfect survival knife, and I don't think one exists. I'm not saying that there is a perfect survival knife, but it kind of led me down this rabbit hole as I was planning out this video and thinking about it. And so, for this Blade Talk Tuesday, I'd like to look at what is a survival knife? How do we define it? What is it used for? And how has it changed over the years? So without further ado, let's get started into this episode of Blade Talk Tuesday. If we travel back in time to the frontiersmen in the 1800s and, and maybe even earlier in American history, what you'll find is that a knife was a tool. A knife was just as important as an ax or a hammer or a saw. It was something that was used in daily life to accomplish tasks just like anything else. And it might look something like this. This is a very historic looking knife with a hammer finish and an antler for a handle. Very cool knife that you would have seen in my collection video, but not every knife would have looked like that. Some knives were just something someone would have picked up from the kitchen, a butchering knife. And in this time, a knife was nothing special. Again, this was a knife just to accomplish a task, and it was a task that was a daily struggle. A lot of people in those times were living off the land. They needed a knife to defend themselves against attackers. They needed a knife to cut up their food. They needed a knife to, to butcher and go hunting. It was just something that everybody had, and it was an expectation that you'd have it. It wasn't treated like it is nowadays, like a, a weapon and a, a big deal. And it was just another tool. Fast forward to the future, and a survival knife might have looked something like this. It would have a compass in the handle. It would have a whole fishing kit, a survival kit in the handle. This type of knife, this type of survival knife was popularized by movies like Rambo. And everybody thought that this was a survival knife. And I wasn't really alive back then, so survival knife wasn't that to me. But I was highly affected by people like this. This is a Bear Grylls survival knife, the ultimate survival knife. Something like this affected me because of the, the person that it was connected to, because Bear Grylls was a survival expert, and he made a knife and he designed it, and if he's backing it, then it must be good. This must be what I need for survival, so I need this. It's all marketing. It's all marketing. And then you fast forward today, and I think a survival knife has become this symbol that people have in their mind that, you know, people like Dave Canterbury said that, you know, it has to be a carbon steel, it has to have a five inch blade, it has to be full tang, blah, blah, blah. And you have this list of, of things that people believe a survival knife needs to have. And I bring all these things up because I have an opinion and I'm gonna share that now. All that is just historical fact, all that is just, you know, kind of backstory to where we are today. And today I think a survival knife is more about the application than the knife itself. A, a survival knife is a task-driven knife, just like back in the frontier time. It's meant to help you survive. So anything that will help you survive a bad situation or survive out in the woods or survive comfortably is a survival knife. Why couldn't this be a survival knife? If you can effectively survive with something like this, why can't this be a survival knife? Les Stroud and Zachary Fowler on Alone Season 3 they both use multi-tools, and they effectively survive. Why can't a multi-tool be a survival 
object, the survival knife. Why can't this be your survival knife? Because it's not as glamorous? Because it doesn't follow Dave Canterbury's rules of survival? But if you can survive with something like this, why can't this be a survival knife? Our picture of survival knife has become something like this. This is a William Collins Master Woodsman Blackbird, AEBL steel, 3 16 stock, full tang, multi-grind. It's like a five and three quarters inch blade. I mean, this thing is a beefy knife. And if you were carrying this out in the woods, yeah, you could effectively do a lot of stuff. But is that really the only thing a survival knife is? I don't know. This is meant to bring up a discussion. This is meant to bring up conversation. I'm curious because for me, in my opinion, um, a survival knife is nothing special. It's just the knife that you have on you or the tool that you have on you. It can be a multi-tool, it can be a, an ax, it can be whatever. It's just the tool you have on you to effectively help you get out of a situation that you don't wanna be in. Survival is not fun, survival is not pretty. True survival is terrifying and dangerous and you might not make it out alive. So whatever tool you have on you automatically becomes a survival knife. If you've got this on you, great. You might survive a little more effectively or a little more easily. If you've got this on you, you could still survive. Might not work as well because of the, the grade of steel or the handle or the fact that it's not full tang, but you could, you could effectively survive with something like this because it's just to get you to safety. I wonder, because of Hollywood, because of marketing, because of certain popular survival gurus, if we haven't put too much emphasis on the knife and not the survival part, if we're not putting too much emphasis on, well, it has to be a certain thing in order for me to survive, whereas it might be more effective to learn survival skills. You know, how many of you can go out there and start a fire without any knife? How many of you can build a shelter without any knife? I mean, maybe your survival, when it, when it hits you, is an animal attack, and you'd rather have a firearm <laughs> than, than a knife. Who wants to go hand to hand with a knife and a bear? I don't. You know, what if it's a, a major storm and you gotta hike off a mountain, or you're gonna get struck by lightning and die? You don't need a knife there. You need a good pair of boots. You need a good rain cover. You need good shelter. What if it's an avalanche in your survival situation? You're gonna wish you had a shovel, not a knife. So these are my thoughts. These are my opinions. I'm sure I'm wrong. I'm sure you guys will tell me how wrong and naive I am in the comments below. Uh, but I'd really like to hear your take on things and your opinion, because I've personally never been in a survival situation and I don't plan on ever being in a survival situation. But the survival knife, that idea, that mentality, is that if you are, you can't plan it, if you are in a survival situation, what do you have on you? What do you wanna be carrying? What do you have in your pocket that will get you out of that situation alive? Thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.